welcome to this final episode in the series and I will start by reconstituting the flux varnish layer of the motherboard which I again removed from the case and I'm spraying flux varnish in all the areas that I originally disturbed the layer that was already there uh, because of rework. The rework is now done so I'm just spraying more flux varnish to equalize that original layer. It's not really necessary but since Sharp uh, chose to do it and it's a very high quality thing to do then I will not leave it worse than I found it. <laughs> now I'm also adding a reset button back that's the same button that the, 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 the previous owner had used but I'm doing things differently now. Uh, first I'm using this reset button although it's a modification because it has a conservational aspect it prevents the need to power cycle the machine all the time which can be stressful for the ICs. But I'm soldering it now from the back of the PCB so it doesn't change the visual aspect of the PCB and I'm also going to put it in an existing original hole in the case, not a drilled out hole. I'm also uh, adding some um, uh, glue there for uh, strain relief. And this is the final result. With uh, the bodges are applied, those dark green areas, they are just sharpies to protect uh, the metal layer and then there is flux varnish uh, anew uh, on top and that's the hot glue, no longer hot, <laughs> to provide strain relief for the reset button. Now I begin reassembly, first I dust off uh, the case, put the motherboard back with the flux varnish layer already dry, reconnect uh, the power supply now I'm putting the screws because this is the final time uh, that hopefully for, a, for many years the motherboard is going to be affixed uh, on its uh, standoffs. The way I will manage the reset button, there is a hole, an original hole at the bottom of the case. I'm going to put it there with a couple of uh, washers and uh, the button will be accessible underneath the case but not visible. And now I'm doing some cable management, uh, some final dusting and cable management to hide the cable of that reset button. And as you see I used uh, uh, heat shrink green uh, to make it as inconspicuous as possible. But again, there is a conservational uh, uh, usefulness for this button to prevent constant power cycling. So this is how the motherboard looks in its final position on the bottom part of the case. And now we have to continue with the assembly process. I already washed uh, the tape dex case in, in uh, warm soapy water. I'm now just doing a final polish with a, a plastic polish to remove scratches uh, and also to clean the hard to access nooks and crannies. Uh, I'm using Novus to remove scratches. There are three types for, for coarse cr scratches, medium scratches and very fine scratches. I use them in sequence. The hardest job is uh, this uh, safety panel for the monitor. Uh, first I'm cleaning it with window cleaner, which will show the, the scratches, make the scratches visible so we know what you're dealing with. And there are a lot of scratches, some deep ones, uh, countless shallow ones. And I want to bring this back to mint condition. So I'm using Novus, starting from number three, to remove the, the deeper uh, scratches, the larger scratches. This is no magic potion, it's not a chemical reaction or anything, this is just an abrasive. So you need to use a lot of elbow grease to polish this back uh, to, to mint uh, condition. I, I chose to speed the footage up but show you everything so you, <laughs> you have an idea of the amount of work uh, that goes into this. Uh, after number three I switch to number two for the less dramatic uh, scratches. And I will finish off with number one just to give it a shine and a final polish. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of elbow grease going on <laughs> in there. Circular motion to the left and to the right. It's getting better already. It's a lot, a lot better already. That's uh, the number one, which is the final polish. Once I'm doing with that final polish, uh, I remove whatever residues uh, of Novus uh, uh, are left with uh, some window cleaner and the Kim wipes that don't leave residues behind and that will allow us to see again uh, uh, where we stand, whether the job is done and uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty okay there are no visible scratches anymore, large or small 
Um, the last step, last step now is a little bit of 303 protectant, which I usually apply on plastics. And then a final buffing um, with um, um, with felt. I don't know how you how you call this. It's a piece of cloth, especially for for buffing things and giving it a shine. And that's that's the final result. I I could not discern any scratch, nothing. It's 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 brand new. It's back to brand new condition. I'm quite happy with it. Now I'm starting to put the monitor's cage back on the top of the uh, top part <laughs> of the computer's case. I'm using new screws, new nuts, um, uh, new washers, lock washers, uh, to make sure that this thing is affixed correctly. Six pairs of um, nuts and bolts. Um, they have to be tightened from the top and from the bottom uh, as well. takes quite a bit of time. It's easy stuff, but takes quite a bit of time. Now we are back to the tape deck. I'm reinstalling um, the tape deck uh, into its uh, case, the top part of the case. I had a problem with some of the original screws. They wouldn't really grab hold of the thread anymore. The thread was already sort of partly destroyed. So I chose to use new screws. Uh, uh, same diameter but the longer screws with, with the same thread pitch, but because they are longer, they could grab the thread at the bottom of their respective holes, um, and the result is firm again, so I feel confident about this. I was not confident at all with the original screws that were there. Here you see me again choosing a new screw. I tried the original again, gave up. Then I tried a slightly larger diameter screw, but uh, I started hearing some creaking sounds, so I took that out not to break anything and I chose again a screw with the same diameter, the same thread pitch, but going deeper and biting into the thread of the hole beyond uh, what the original holes were doing. I'm connecting uh, all the ground wires again, regrounding everything through the case. I'm testing that everything is grounded uh, with uh, my multimeter and everything is grounded. You don't need to scratch the case for this. The contact is made through the threads of the metal screws. They remove the paint and, 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 and make the contact that way. Now those are the little hooks for cable management. Now I take a lot of time, you know, cleaning and polishing and uh, dusting uh, the, the face of the monitor because I'm about to put um, that uh, safety screen uh, back using double-sided, very thin double-sided transparent tape and once I affix that panel back I will no longer have an opportunity to dust or clean uh, the screen underneath so you will see me uh, dusting and cleaning several times uh, at the end I will be using a pair of uh, um, cloth uh, gloves to not put any uh, um, you know, fingerprints uh, uh, on the monitor or on the back of the panel that I wouldn't be able to clean afterwards. So a little bit more polishing and, and dusting and there goes the safety panel. Now that's what the partial build looks like. Uh, everything is clean, new components everywhere. Um, it's looking good. I'm happy with it uh, at this point. Now I'm reattaching that little piece of felt that protects the speaker. Um, I'm using very thick, very strong aluminum tape. Uh, that tape will never peel off. And now comes the cover of the monitor's cage that needs to be screwed uh, back in place from underneath. Now remember this old footage from the beginning of this series showing you know, the board inside the, the monitor very dirty and this bent up cover plate with a big hole in the middle. I, I wanted to shoot uh, the same angles again and show you uh, what the result is looking like at this point uh, of the reassembly. It's the same kind of footage, but uh, yeah, the analog board is looks brand new, all new capacitors, many new components, everything cleaned. And that uh, cover panel uh, that goes into the back uh, is banged back straight, <laughs> the hole is closed, everything is resprayed. That looks much better. The original serial number sticker I will put back, of course. 
So, so there we continue the reassembly. It's difficult to line up all the screws again because, you know, after all the treatment, the metal expands and changes shape. So you have to be careful lining everything up again. Everything screwed back in place. And now I have to put the top part of the case and connect it to the bottom through that hinge. And there is no other way to do that but to first uh, put the bolts from the bottom up. So I had to lie on the floor to do that. It's a pain in the neck. And then you have to put the nuts and tighten the, the, the nuts from the top. Um, uh, a wrench is a pretty important, uh, torque wrench is pretty important uh, a tool to do that. Now the keyboard is going back in. I should have placed it before, but uh, somehow I forgot. <laughs> um, so I'm putting it back now. It's a little inconvenient, but it goes back in. We are very close to finishing this now. All the screws are back. Now some cable management. I put the screws, the, 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 the little cable through those uh, little hooks. Some cable, cable management at the back. I try a few different things, then I change my mind. <laughs> and, uh, but I do uh, finally manage to, to put the cables together in the correct way. And that's the final board, the fifth and final. It's the LED board that needs to be screwed back in place and uh, the LED plug connected again. It's a little green 5 volt LED. Some more cable management, but first I try to figure out what is the ground of the uh, connector. Uh, the ground is, in the ground is in the middle, so it doesn't help me find the right orientation. So I look at my earlier footage and photos and I connect it, it back exactly like, the, like it was. I suspect that whichever way you connect it, it would work, but I do it exactly as before. And this is what the interior uh, of the machine looks like. That's the, the final looks uh, of the machine from the inside. You see the little cable management there at the back. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, it's not absolutely perfect, but uh, you know, at some point you have to stop, otherwise it takes forever. Uh, you see that uh, green heat shrink of the reset button that I left in there. I tried to make it as inconspicuous as I possibly could, so the looks of the machine is original. I did test the machine on for a while and checked the temperature of the chips. The character generator and uh, the timer controller, they get a little hot but not too much, so I figured I'm not going to change the looks by putting a black heat sink on top. I decided it's safe to leave it this way. The memories don't, don't get hot at all. And that's the final step. I have to affix that little badge. Because I used a raw, uh, a raw uh, RAL color, the badge will not perfectly match uh, the color of the rest of the case. But that's a sign as well that uh, this is a rest restored computer, not an original. And let me talk a little bit about this. This is a photo of the end result. It explains also why, why I chose a glossy finish for the monitor bezel. Uh, it's because once you fully restore the, the safety panel, it will have a glossy uh, looks and it will blend much better with the bezel if the bezel is glossy as well, although that's not original. But I always do something very subtle, very discreet, but unambiguously not original when I do a restoration. To, to, to sort of identify that computer as a, as a restored one and not a very well preserved original one. I think that would be a cheat. So in, my, in, in the pad, for instance, I used a non-glossy sticker on the front of the computer. The original was glossy. Um, in the Wang, I didn't repaint the Wang logo black. I left it green. All these little subtle things to identify the machine as a restored machine. So here it is, the final result now. Thanks for watching this series.